Welcome. I am so delighted that you have joined us for the 2020 graduation ceremony at William & Mary Law School. This is, of course, one of the great days in our calendar each year, and we're delighted that so many friends and families have come to recognize and honor our graduates. Now, this was not exactly the way we thought we would do graduation, but I'll tell you one thing about the class of 2020. They are resilient, and, and I hope they'll carry that with them for the rest of their lives. They have gone through some difficult challenges in the last semester, but here we are, and we're here today to celebrate our graduates, our 182 JD graduates, and then our 37 LLM graduates who are foreign lawyers from around the world who have come to Williamsburg to study in the American legal system. Congratulations to all of you on your success. This is your day and we're here to honor you. I wanna say a few things about the graduating class of 2020. Before I do though, I wanna say something for the parents and the friends and the families. There's something you need to know about our law school in order to fully appreciate these graduate, this graduation ceremony. If you'll come back with me to the 1770s, there are no law schools in America. The first law school is founded here at William and & Mary, and it's founded for a very particular purpose, to train political leaders who will help the nation make the transition from government by monarchs to government by the people. That's why William and Mary Law School was founded in 1779 by Thomas Jefferson and George Wythe. Now, why do I tell you this? Besides, it's a good story. I tell you this because one of the elements of that early instruction was that lawyers should use their gifts, their legal talents for the greater good. Be citizen lawyers where you're paying attention to the needs of your community, the needs of society. And that's so much of what we are about at this law school. And it's what the graduates have come to appreciate and embrace over the past few years. Let me speak now directly to the graduates, if I may. You are an enormously talented group of individuals you're already very engaged with your communities, with the nation, and with the world. With your law degree, soon to be followed by your law license, you will enjoy a special status in American society. In the spirit of our founders, Wythe and Jefferson, I encourage you to use your special status well in the service not just of yourselves, but of the broader community as citizen lawyers. If you do that, you will have a meaningful life. You may remember 
orientation day three years ago. You just arrived at law school, probably a little nervous, wondering how things were going to work out. And I made a prediction about your class. I said the following. I thought that someone in your class would become a member of Congress. Others of you would serve in state legislatures or on a city council. And in fact, one member of the graduating class, Benny Zhang, he serves on a city council right now here in Williamsburg. I suggested that some of you might go into the foreign service or that you might be involved in legal reform efforts to make the law more just. I thought that a number of you would become prosecutors or criminal defense attorneys. And I knew that if you did, you would serve the cause of justice in whatever side you were on. Some of you, I thought, would become leaders in local civic organizations or bar organizations. Many of you, I thought, would exercise leadership in major law firms and, 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 and work in your communities for the better good. And on and on. In other words, the theme of service in whatever way that has meaning for you. But here's the thing. Is that service something that you do later in your career after you've been a lawyer for many years? I don't think so. Remember that Thomas Jefferson was only 33 years old when he wrote the Declaration of Independence. That Martin Luther King was only 26 years old when he led the Montgomery bus boycott that began to change the status of African Americans in our country. So you can do this work now. And in fact, many of you have. Many of you have used your legal careers to serve the legal needs of those who need your service. Continue that in the work that you do as you go forth. I want to close with an observation that I offer to every graduating class. And the observation is this, that in 1776, when Jefferson penned the Declaration of Independence, he described our three fundamental rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now think about that for a second. When we think about that recitation of our fundamental rights, we typically think of life, liberty, and property. But Jefferson mixed it up. So what's going on with that? What's Jefferson saying to us when he says one of our fundamental rights is the pursuit of happiness. If you think about the pursuit of happiness in 18th century terms, it's probably best translated as the pursuit of meaning. Jefferson claimed we had an inalienable right to pursue meaning in our lives. And that's what I want you to think about as you go forth from the law school today. My hope is that each one of you will follow that admonition of Jefferson to find meaning in your life. And first, I hope you find meaning in your work as a lawyer. And I promise that if you engage the legal profession as a citizen lawyer, that will bring you fulfillment. But I'll also say this, if your life is only lived in the law, then I think you may be missing something of Jefferson's call to pursue happiness. Before you came to law school, some of you were poets, musicians, writers. You were active in your churches, your synagogues, your mosque. You explored the out of doors. You cherished time with your friends and with your family. You celebrated the joyous occasions that life brings. You offered consolation in times of sorrow. Don't lose sight of those parts of yourself. You're gonna work hard. Being a lawyer is a challenging profession and it does have long hours. 
But I want you to always be remembering that call that we are to pursue meaning in our lives as we work for the good of others. I wish all of you well. You joined a William and Mary family three years ago and you will forever be part of the William and Mary family. I want you to come back. I want you to visit. I want to hear about your lives. I want to hear about your successes. I want to hear about the, the struggles of being a lawyer in the early years. Stay in touch with us because we certainly want to stay in touch with you. We will follow your lives with great interest. I wish you well. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Law schools in the United States honor students graduating in the top 10% of their class by inducting them into the order of the coif. This honor society was established in 1902, but the order of the coif has its origins in medieval England, where it was an order composed of the justices of the central courts and the most senior members of the bar, the lawyers known as the sergeants at law. By the middle decades of the 14th century, a tradition had developed of elevating the most senior members of the legal profession to the rank of sergeant at law. The term sergeant may seem a bit odd to our ears when applied to a lawyer. Sergeant is an old French word derived from the Latin serviens, or servant. We don't know why people originally began to use the term to refer to lawyers, but by the 14th century, the sergeants themselves believed that they were so-called because they had a duty to serve all the king's people. We might think of the sergeants at law as early citizen lawyers. Sergeant at law, or serviens ad legem, was an exalted rank. The sergeants at law had a monopoly over practice in the court of common pleas, the most lucrative of the central courts of the common law. In addition, only sergeants at law could be made justices of what were essentially the two supreme courts of the common law the Court of Common Pleas, and Courts of Common Pleas and King's Bench. The sergeants and justices together formed an order, and since they were members of the same order, once a lawyer was elevated to the rank of sergeant, he would no longer address a justice as my lord, but as my brother. By the 17th century, this order of sergeants and justices was referred to as the Order of the Coif. After the distinctive headdress of its members, the Coif, a white linen head covering that ties underneath the chin and looks a little like the children's bonnets you can buy in Colonial Williamsburg. The coif was the symbol of the sergeant at law. Lawyers were not invited to join the order of the coif. They were commanded to do so. After serving for several decades pleading cases at the bar, a successful lawyer might receive a writ from the king commanding him to take up the estate and degree of sergeant at law. The sergeant had no choice in the matter. The writ he received was, believe it or not, a writ of subpoena. Some people did try to refuse the honor because elevation to the rank of sergeant at law came at great expense. The new sergeant was required to pay for a celebratory feast, to buy new robes for many of the lesser officials of the royal courts, and to distribute gold rings to the dignitaries present at the ceremony, a practice referred to as giving gold. So I hope you're prepared. I will now read the writ commanding all of you to take up the estate and degree of sergeant at law. This is based on an actual coif writ from 1695, two years after William III and Mary II established the College of William and Mary in Virginia. Guglielmus Tertius et Maria Secunda, Dei Grazia Angliae, Scotiae, Franciae, et Haberniae, Rex et Regina, Fidei, Defensores, etc. Dilectis et fidelibus nostris, doctoribus signore, salutam. Quia de visimento concilii nostri ordinavimus vos ad statum et gradum servientium ad legem suscipiendum. Vobis mandamus firmiter injugendo quod vos ad statum et gradum predictos in forma predicta suscipiendum in mediate post receptionem huius brevis nostris ordinetus et preparetes et hoc sub pena mille librarum nulletenis omitatis. 
ad ipsos regem et regina. And here's the translation. William III and Mary II, by the grace of God, King and Queen of England, Scotland, France, and Ireland, defenders of the faith, etc., to our well-beloved and trusty doctors of law, greetings. Because on the advice of our council, we ordain that you take up the estate and degree of sergeant at law, we command you by firmly enjoining that you arrange and prepare to take up the aforesaid estate and degree in the form aforesaid immediately after the receipt of this, our writ. And this under penalty of 1,000 pounds, which by no means should be laid aside, by the king and queen themselves. Congratulations, sergeants, and I'm looking forward to receiving a gold ring from each of you. Everybody. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rebecca Jager, and I served as the Student Bar Association president for the last year. I know that the last three years have not been the easiest years of our lives, and we faced quite a few unprecedented situations with hurricanes, a freak snowstorm, and this unprecedented pandemic. But I also wanted to take a moment to recognize our accomplishments here at William & Mary. Above all, I think it's most impressive that we've built an incredibly strong community that has been able to support one another over the last three years. Together, we've celebrated each other's triumphs, supported each other through the tough times, spent countless hours in the library, on journal, running through hypos, but above all, we've made some great friends. And I look forward to seeing what this community and those friends will do to support us as we take on the real world. I would also be remiss if I did not take a minute to thank the many people who have helped us get here today. To the faculty and staff at William & Mary Law School, thank you for everything you've done for the class of 2020, especially as we navigated this uh, unexpected spring semester. Thank you to our family and friends and all of our other support systems who provided a much needed laugh, support, or a listening ear throughout the last three years.
And to the class of 2020, it's been an honor and a privilege to walk these halls with you over the last few years. I can't wait to see what we all accomplish in the real world. Hello, class 2020. My name is Gordon Jiang. I am so honored to give the graduation speech through this video. From the past one year, I have acquired an amazing amount of legal knowledge in our law school. But meanwhile, as you, I have also encountered many challenges. Using a second language to study law, countless readings and homework, especially the code call, I can guarantee this is definitely one of the scariest things I have ever experienced. Today, I want to thank our faculty, staff, tutors, and my classmates. Because of your hard work and help, I have the courage and the confidence to face such challenges. The past few months of this semester has been a hard time for each of us. In the future, we will still face new challenges of various dilemmas. But please, do not give up or lose confidence, because you may not know how incredible you are and how much energy you have to contribute. You can now successfully graduate from this 
oldest law school in the United States, that alone proves how incredible you are. I also hope you can use the knowledge you have gained in law school to help people in need and let them feel the hope brought by the justice and the fairness of the law. I do believe you can do it. Congratulations, Class 2020 of the William and Mary Law School. God bless you. Thank you. Dear graduates, congratulations. On behalf of everyone at the law school, the faculty, the staff, the administration, we are so proud of you and your accomplishment of graduating from law school. I know this semester didn't turn out as any of us envisioned, but your resilience, professionalism, and good spirits have helped to lift us all during this difficult time. I wish we were together to celebrate your accomplishment but please know we're all thinking about you and wishing you well as you embark on your next chapter. To all your families, friends, and loved ones watching this, you should be very proud of these students. Through their extracurricular activities at the law school, their classes, and their support of each other, these students have shown the best of William and Mary. I'm so proud to have known many of you and to have been a small part of your lives. You are smart, dedicated, and will go on to do great things. In times of uncertainty regarding jobs, living situations, and really everything else, please know that all of us have your back. Don't let short-term uncertainty get you down. There will be ebbs and flows in all of life. Careers are long, life is long. Whatever short-term hardships you may be experiencing now will fade away. For those of you who have the jobs they covet, do us proud. For those who don't, Good things happen to people who keep their chin up. Don't let these times beat you, and your family at William and Mary will always have your back. Congratulations again, graduates. Celebrate this wonderful accomplishment in your lives. We are all so proud of you. Congratulations, JDs and LLMs. Congratulations, parents, other family, friends. You must be incredibly proud of your graduates. We are too. They couldn't have done it without your support. Thank you. There's a book that I sometimes give out of my classes as a prize. It's called, I'm Kind of Awesome. It's a journal that has a blank page for each day to write an affirmation. Something like, I'm kind of awesome because I graduated, for example. There's another book though, that I also give out sometimes that I like even better. It's called, Why You're So Awesome. On each page, you're supposed to write a compliment to someone you admire or who deserves some encouragement, and then you give them that page. So graduates, here are some pages I would give you today. You're so awesome because you showed a lot of resilience this semester. It's so awesome how you supported each other during law school. Remember how awesome it was when you felt like a lawyer for the first time. You're so awesome because you have superpowers that can help people and change the world. You made me feel really awesome when you 
awarded me the Walter Williams Teaching Award. That means a ton to me. I'm so grateful. Thank you. I'll always cherish it. Think about how awesome it'll be when we can see each other in person again. I hope to see you at the ceremony in the fall. You're so awesome because you did it. Congratulations again. First of all, congratulations to the graduating class of 2020 William & Mary Law School. You have so much to be proud of, so much to be thankful for, and a great adventure awaits you. Now, the bad news is that you can't all be together today for commencement, uh, and I can't be there with you for commencement either to give a commencement address. The good news is that this message will be very short, and you don't have to worry about remembering any of it. Uh, there's more good news. You are entering a profession that I still believe to be noble and powerful and important. And you will have so many opportunities to do good in the world and in your community and in your country. And I hope you'll seize those opportunities. But for today, be happy, excited, and proud of what you've accomplished. And I hope to see you in person in the fall. Once again, congratulations. class of 2020. My name is Ann Bomar from the class of 1991 
and I'm the incoming president of the Marshall With Alumni Association Board. You have been in our thoughts. Your abrupt departure from the campus, I'm sure, has been a big adjustment. But this has also been a time, as citizen lawyers, to rise to the occasion. I'm sure that you have, and that you'll continue to do so. And while our traditional celebrations may be altered or delayed, know that we are very proud of you and welcome you to the Marshall With alumni community. Think of this time as a jump start on the efforts that you make to preserve the valuable relationships among your peers. There are great tools and technology to stay connected with your classmates and with the Marshall With alumni community, and we certainly hope that you'll do so. I also hope that this has been a time of reflection. In the words of Thoreau, a time to listen to the beat of your own drummer, to remind you why and what goals brought you to Marshall With to begin with. And I hope that you'll listen to the music that you hear and wish you every success along the path, wherever that may take you. If the Alumni Association can be of any assistance as you work to stay connected to this community, please reach out and know that we wish you all the best and every congratulations as you start the next chapter in your legal career. Stay well in this extraordinary time. Thanks. Congratulations to the great class of 2020. Congratulations. 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 Yeah.